Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Oh, yes, we have to make this a joyful one. Good morning. Good morning. Well, there's so much going on here at Holy Trinity, and we are glad that you have joined us. Whether you are watching us at another time, uh, your convenience, or maybe this morning you're watching with your littles all around, having your best breakfast ever. For me, that was, well, I thought I was really stepping it up a game when the um, Pop-Tarts were actually warm. So there you go. It is good to be here. I'm Pastor Katie. Pastor Tim returns next week. We are thrilled to see him again. Please plan on joining us. We will have an outside uh, reception for him all morning long and welcoming Pastor Tim and Lisa back from a time of discovery, a time of respite and renewal. So please plan on joining us. Uh, we will have worship first, and he will be welcomed back uh, during worship and then go straight to a fellowship time after that. We will still have our second service, um, but I have a feeling people will still be chatting outside um, all morning long, so please plan on doing that. If the weather somehow um, is uncooperative, we will make a, um, plans accordingly, knowing that, obviously, we want to be a part of the changing um, of what's going on with um, the need to wear masks, especially for our children. And in cooperation and solidarity with our children, we've been wearing masks for vacation Bible school and times when they're in the building. We are asking now that when you're inside the building that you wear your masks. Um, if you are here with one other person, you're doing some ministry together, that is your personal choice. But for when we gather, we are going to, in solidarity, we are not just encouraging, we are expecting one another to wear masks. We will get through this next phase. We know it was coming. It's here. If at all possible, get vaccinated. If it's not possible, let's wear masks. And together, we will, um, we will just look out for each other and be our best self and loving self. If you are watching this at a later time, our hope is that um, at home you are safe and feeling very secure. But when you go out, whether it be at a store, wherever it is, let's mask up and um, be a part of the solution. Be a part of the miracle. Other announcements are going, have been sliding all morning. They are on your website. They are also in your bulletin. I don't want to spend a lot of time um, repeating that, but just thanking God. Um, Eric Crow, um, who used to uh, attend worship here, he's sitting about right there um, and is a lovely man. He got married yesterday, and I was blessed to be a part of their wedding uh, in Madison, Wisconsin. And um, it was a, just a lovely, lovely day. So I want to celebrate with um, Eric and his family. Uh, other announcements? I don't think we have any. Let's go ahead. Stand as you are comfortable and able to do so. The grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Let us have our opening song. pray. Oh God of all creation, you dwell with us in the here and now. May we have confidence that you are with your people. And as we struggle, as we wonder and ponder, as we journey, as we dance for joy, may we have confidence that you are on each step of the way. 
breathing in and breathing out your goodness. Lord, thank you for you have blessed us. May we be a blessing to you. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So, Vacation Bible School. Sometimes we think of it as a time when it's just a lot of littles jumping up and down, which it can be. This year was a little different because our littles came in and they were fully masked. And sometimes you wonder, are they listening? Wanting to see their full face and wanting to know, are you really in it with us? And time and time again, we saw yes. Yes, they were fully present wanting to dance for joy because we gave them the freedom for movements. Some of you may have watched the mission video from last week and we were giggling how many people that had gone on a mission trip had also served as youth leaders during vacation Bible school and could easily do all the actions to the songs. They had already given up one full week of their life being here day after day. And we blessed we were blessed by them, but we turned the blessing towards them as well, investing in camp counselors who invested in them. Those same individuals took a quick break, quick pause, and then came back for yet another week of service. This time, the week of service, not in an air-conditioned building, but outside in 104-degree weather. I'm proud of our youth. And sometimes I can bring up a lot of their joys and triumphs because I have had the privilege of watching and seeing them. What I'm encouraging you and I to do is share our stories when we too have been a serving hand for God. Those stories, you know them, you've been doing them. But sometimes we as adults do them and we forget to share them, to lift them up in prayer to remind one another, hey, I'm going to the food pantry. Would you like to come with me? Hey, the blood drive's coming up. Yes, it's usually the same 11 folks, 18 folks. Have you thought about doing it? Hey, you know what? I'm going to be putting some groceries in the, food pan in the food box. Would you like to do that too? Reminding one another to come along on the journey of service, not setting just the servants apart, but getting that holy nudge when can we be a part of a solution, part of God's, God's mission to care for the hungry, clothe the naked, and look out for the widow and those who live very far on the margins. Why am I saying all this during a children's message? Well, the children got pretty close to filling this quarter tube. Now, I've learned the long, hard way, don't lift it up because <laughs> sometimes it just comes apart and you have quarters all over the place. By the way, filling this quarter tube up today means that we as a congregation can send money to Water to Thrive and build yet another well. You've been thirsty, you've been hot. What if you had to walk miles upon miles just to get water, carry it on your back or on your head to drink it? Today, the children got us this far. Can we get it the rest of the way? I'm inviting you, if you have that loose quarter change in your pocket, which most of us don't even carry a wallet, let alone change, but if you do, to be a part of something else that was started, to be a part of what the children began that we can be a part of and we can complete together. Holy Trinity, We've got this. May our hearts be stirred to give water, to give compassion, to walk alongside of those, those who are thirsty, those who are hungry, those who are lonely. Let us pray. God of all creation, we give you thanks and praise that you indeed fill our hearts today. God, um, we just ask, that today this quarter to be filled so that what water can be given to a village far, far away. And people whom we have never met will drink water from the ground that you have provided. We thank the children, the parents, the grandparents that urge their children to bring quarters 
And now, oh God, we surrender this gift to you. Thanks, God, for loving us first, loving us always, forgiving and inspiring us to love one another. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We will have the reading of our scripture. through 5-2. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. All right, so now, see that little clicker that's around here someplace? You're going to find it for me, Mark. It's right next to Pastor John. While they do that, we're going to pray. Will you pray with me, please? God of all creation, we come to you in the here and now and give you thanks that you are indeed our God and we are your people. Lord, as we have lots on our minds, may we hear the fullness of this passage today. May it draw us towards one another in community at a time when we are fearful and safe distancing and masking. But Lord, we too can still still be a part of your kingdom, your vision, your mission for your people. Stir our hearts, O God, today with a restlessness. Lord, may the words that are spoken today be the words you intend your listeners to hear, and together we share. We pray this in all things in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We have been on a sermon series, For Our Sake. So I've been doing this with you, but it's kind of fun because it helps me remind myself where things are too. Everybody get your Bibles out. Ready? Get your Bibles out. Got your Bibles out? Oh, I'll I'll wait. I'm ready here. We got our Bibles out. Then you go smack. That's usually the Psalms, right? Now, keep going this way. Oh, we found Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts. That was really great. Then there's the letters. The letters that were written to the church 2,000 years ago. The letters that didn't have all that documentation to work with, but instead had heard these stories, had lived these stories, and were encouraging one another as the church was in the very early stages of being the church. And we hear these stories. The original part of our summer, we've been talking about how these passages were for our, or for your sake, as if God was speaking specifically to you to urge you and nudge you. And then there comes this moment when we have taken a turn in our passages, and now it's for our sake. Why? Did you hear what we were encouraged and how we were encouraged, affirmed, and nudged to be? Suzanne's reading today, reminding us of the fullness of what it means to be the church. 
to be the body of Christ. I'm going to pause on that for a moment. What is your favorite story from the Olympics 2021? I don't think we're supposed to say 2021, aren't, isn't it? 2020s, 2021's Olympics. What's your favorite story? Honestly, when we were on the um, youth mission trip, I didn't even, didn't even know what was going on. I had forgotten this amazing world event was going on that everyone else was glued to. But I, I knew it was happening. One day when we were walking through the area in our, um, in our dorm room, in the open you know, fellowship area, there was a paddle ball, is that what it's called? There's a game that I'd never paid attention to. Sorry, it's not one of, my, it's not one of mine. But they're playing paddle ball, and it's a whole group of students that are living on campus for the summer, speaking a language that is not of my own no knowledge. And they're watching, and they're cheering on their team because their team is actually in the finals for this game. And they are just going at it, and it's amazing. And I went, it's the Olympics. And not everybody's looking at it through a USA view. It was joyful to watch and to just be a part of their exuberance, their joy. What is your favorite story from the Olympics this year? And for you and I, sometimes we're not real sports-minded. It's still all around us. See, I think often it is the victory or lack thereof that that's what gets the attention of the TV coverage. And it may be why the athlete is being interviewed, but I think it's the story, the whole story, that has the most influence. You know, the athlete who says, last year, remember, they had to hold on for a whole nother year, a whole nother year of qualifying, a whole nother year of physical fitness, the mamas who had to wait a whole nother year, they were not only having their kids in school during COVID, they were working out nine to five. I mean, just trying to be athletes and trying to keep their sponsorship. The last year, some of these athletes said, I've, it's been really hard at times, and I didn't think I could make it until the athlete who said, I have worked so hard for this day. The other athletes really pushed me to be my best self today. That's what draws me. I don't know about you. Maybe you have a story. But you know what doesn't draw me in? What doesn't draw me in is the athlete who said, man, I've prayed and prayed that everybody would have their worst day. I mean, like they would come and fall and trip or drop something. The athlete who said, oh, man, I just hope that everybody is just horrible because that will make me look good. I remember that interview. The interviews that we heard were ones often inspired. We're all very familiar with the beloved, most beloved um, gymnast who, by the way, um, we're being challenged. She keeps getting a tagline that she um, stepped aside from uh, the opportunity to perform or to, um, to compete because have you seen how high she gets thrown in the air and how far she spins? We can disagree with her decision, but the right to make the decision for her best self. But how has it been explained? It's been explained that she had mental health issues. Until we can say this, she had health issues, not preempted with mental health. She had health issues, and she took the wise advice that said, you know what, you're not in a place that you could do this. Now, if she'd broken her ankle, we wouldn't say, oh, she took orthopedic you know, issues. We would have said she'd been injured. But it must have been a huge story. And we have now on a national, international platform debated her right to step back. And she's given us pause. I find that inspiring. It's not a matter of agreeing with her or disagreeing with her. It is the ability to have the conversation and how we have it. What do you hear, feel, or share today? around you. 
And how can your story of what you are feeling, hearing, or long to hear and feel and share, how is it inspiring? What will leave you today so your shoulders are like, I'm ready to go into the world? Because it's a lot on my shoulders as one little person here to say what some pithy little thing that I said that has been said for 2,000 years, you're going to go, there, boom, mic drop, shh. I'm going to remember that forever, and it's going to be a life changer because I was inspired in worship today. You know, we come to worship, we watch worship, we gather for worship on all different kinds of platforms. Why? To give God thanks. And then to hear the challenging passage today of being the church in its best self. One thing I do um, the night before when I'm doing a wedding, I kind of have some ground rules. Sometimes these are ground rules that I may have wished that had happened at our own wedding, but they're definitely ground rules that I have watched other weddings. One time I showed up to do a wedding long, long ago. I showed up to do this wedding, and I had been at a conference, so I'd been there for rehearsal, went to the conference, came back. And now everybody's dressed and ready to go to the wedding, and they start marching in. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's one person that's not, that's not the right person, and the tuxedo doesn't fit just right. What has happened overnight? Somebody thought it'd be really funny to get the best man that messed up that they couldn't come to the wedding. I look out into the uh, fellowship area. There's a big old bucket, a gentleman sitting next to it, and he's as green as green can be. Now, the plan was to put somebody else in the, the tuxedo and Photoshop the whole thing, right? As if we all won't remember the story. I share that because in a moment wanting to be our best self, we forgot all the things that we need to do to be our best self. We need to do it together. Not create one story one night, but create an experience for this family that they will retell time and time and time again. Saying to families when we're doing a wedding, here's an opportunity for you to not only be your best self, but start the best narrative ever. Because whatever happens and however we speak of it is going to be shared time and time and time again. And it was with a great joy that yesterday I got to say to those who had gathered, good and faithful servants, well done, for you have brought these two to this place here and now. But it is our job to continue to walk with them. How will we build one another up? I love Liz Wiseman. I encountered her at what's called Global Leadership uh, Summit, Global Leadership Summit. John and I have been going for years upon years. Um, it is now also offered online. We were watching it again, but this little, uh, this speech that she did, not little, this, uh, it just, huge impact on my life was when she talked about multipliers. And when she talked about this thing called diminishers and multipliers. At the time I encountered her, I had not put words to this. Diminishers and multipliers. Diminishers are people that when you walk away from them, you feel less than. Sometimes we use this language. Well, this is, I just need to speak truth to you. And then we diminish them. Now, there is a time for reprimand. There is a time for dis discipline. The word discipline meaning to teach. Not put your nose up against the door or wall or whatever, but to teach. A diminisher has some own issues with themselves. And when they speak to somebody else, the person walks away feeling less than they did when they gathered. So keep that in mind. Multipliers. Multipliers see something you've done specifically and can name it for you, affirming you, and in that moment, you walk away going, well, maybe I can do this. Another study that I love is Finders. 
I just happened on the book again and took another test on it. Strengths Finders. The premise on this is that we've all been created with strengths. We don't sit here and go, every strength has a weakness. N -n -n -n. Stay in the strengths. And here are my five strengths, and my five strengths are different than your five strengths. But together now we have ten strengths. That's not what we do, though. We sit here and go, five strengths. You're only going to really need three for your job. And your weakest one probably is the one you're going to spend the most time on. So what we have is an industry that's spending 80% of their time and energy on something they may only be at this level at versus saying, you know what, let's regroup. How can I multiply? How can I build you up? How can I see the things that you do and set you then and say, do more of that? This is different than saying to someone, thank you. This is when you look upon someone and you say, when you put water in the baptismal font, it helps remind me of my baptismal commitment. And when I'm standing here preaching, I see the water and the reflection in it, and I remind myself these are not my words but Jesus Christ. This is God speaking through me. And I am thankful. And I know that Nancy encourages her whole team in that same way. But if I do, do not acknowledge what she has brought to the body, to the unity, to the community, she may continue to put water in that baptismal font for her own um, understanding of its purpose, but never here there is a connection. Never here the more the power of perceived power. The power of perceived power of an intentional diminisher versus an intentional builder. I were, use the word intentional. We all know when we do it. I was home after our trip to Madison, and I could have found five things in the first few minutes that were not in the place that I had left it, was not done the way that I wanted, that was, you know, I was mad at the dogs. I mean, Gus let me down big time, right? He piddled in my bedroom. Actually, he piddled in the closet in my bedroom, which means he knew what this act was. Even the dog didn't meet my criteria. Even the dog, I diminished him right there and then. You know what he wanted to do? He's sitting there going, I'm so glad you're home. Where have you been? I went needed to go out, and you weren't here to help me. So went where your favorite place is, where all your clothes are, where it smells like you, and I just thought, well, I'll piddle here. I did not give him the benefit of the doubt. I got that shampoo out, and I'm like looking at him, like, like feel bad about this. And he's still just doing his dog thing. As he piddled probably the day before. But I, myself, can be a diminisher. Or confuse just saying thank you with affirmation and encouragement. Intentional builders. In bu intentional builders look for those things in those moments, those nuggets, and they don't have to be a dissertation like this. Those little moments when you say, when you did this, I saw. And here's why. We, in the scriptures, there is this thing in the old scriptures, remember your Bible, in this part of the scriptures, people longed for the blessing. In fact, in fact brothers killed off one another, longing for a blessing. Longing to be say, what you have done has got value. What you, who you are, oh, I can't wait for you, my son, to take it further. Now, as a feminist, I'm going to say, take the child, the parent saying to the child, hey, take this next generation, this, take this, what we have gathered together, the people we've gathered together, and Lord, I just want you to love on them, forgive them, lead them for another generation so that what? They will lead in a healthy way the generation upon generations after that. Right at the get-go, people were already fighting and trying to cheat one another out of this thing called a blessing. Or somebody said, I see in you. Intentional builders do more than just say thank you. They pause in their day and say because. Now, 
The idea of Liz was not to say we don't need to hear hard talk. That's not what she's saying at all. She's not saying that there aren't moments in your day when you need to say just a second to your coworker, to your spouse, to your children, to someone at school or somebody else, I need to have a hard conversation with you. But she does say that you have to get real. You don't get to slide it in. This is how we slide it in. We say, you know what? It was so awesome to see you today. Oh, I really liked your outfit. Looked good on you. Hey, just the thought, I'd like to talk to you, and boom. We have growing edges. That was a nice way in the early t- uh, 2020s when we would say, or 2000, gosh, 2000, and we would say, you know what? You have some strengths, but here's your growing edges. Just be honest right? Hey, you know what? I need to have a hard talk with you today. And here's what I need to have that hard talk with you. Are you re- uh, can we be real with each other? That's different than intentionally diminishing. She has this saying, and it goes like this, everyone is brilliant at something. Pastor John said it last week in his sermon that will be available online in the next couple weeks so you can see the full of his message. But he said, when we say to ourselves, oh, I have nothing that I do well. Wait a minute, I I just, no, not me. Then we are diminishing that in your baptism, the doves come in, the Holy Spirit goes uh, right there and says, you have been gifted now for the mission of God. We come back and go, oh, not really. What do I have to offer? In fact, I have, in my mind, can remember Pastor John's shrug even. He goes, well, I, and he went like this, and I thought, well, that was kind of gutsy to say it like that. He was speaking truth to us. He did not diminish, but he inspired us. In Liz's words, she would say, Everything, everyone is brilliant at something. This isn't saying something nice so that you don't sound mean. This is being someone nice and saying something that is nice because it's truthful. So this isn't about saying something nice so you don't appear mean. This is about being someone who is nice and says something nice that is indeed truthful. Now there's another part to this. When someone says that nice thing to you, what do we do? Oh, me? No, that's nothing. I just, you know. And we immediately say it's a nothing. In my husband's hallway, at his office, he still has his quilt of valor. It is hung in the most prominent place in his um, workspace, a place that he spends more hours there than at home, that his team knows more about him than often I do where this summer I have watched him use a walker, now a cane, to see his patients. That quilt of valor, someone may have said, oh, that's nothing. It was a gift that means everything. Where are you? Where are you, and where are you longing and aching to be told that there is more to your life, that there is purposefulness, longing to be inspired. What if we inspired one another? Now, Liz wasn't saying, talk about going up to somebody now and saying, okay, I got to talk nice about her. I got to build her up or build him up. Woo. And she wasn't the first one to say this stuff. In fact, she had something to work with that the writer of our letter did not. She had the Bible. And in the Bible, in verse 29, it says, So then, let's say it together. Ready? So then, putting away falsehood, let us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. We are members of one another. That means as the body, when we speak to one another, how would we receive what we're saying? I know my sister's watching today, so I will be sensitive, but... I know that her neighbors are looking out for her now that she is a brand new widow. 
And one of her neighbors remembers when they put their trash out is her trash out as well. It may seem small, but it means the world. As a sister who lives a mile away, it means that my sister's neighbors are looking out for her. It reminds me that I forgot about the trash. I could beat myself up. Oh, I'm not taking care of her. All the no, the neighbor does this gesture, which seems so small, but is so significant. Knock, knock, knock. Can I take your trash cans out for you? We all know what happens when you don't do it, right? Now you have double the trash the next week. Well, where we live, you pay a fine now for that. Something that seems simple becomes the world. Let's continue with this. It says this. Ready? Say it with me. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Doesn't that sound like that should have been in her book? 2,000 years earlier, the author of this letter said, hey, hey, the evil talk, Check yourself. You know when you're doing it too, right? We all do. We jokingly call our small group, bless her heart. There's a reason, because when you say something and you caught yourself, oh, bless her heart. We catch ourselves when we talk about our spouses or our people that we love most, and we go, oh, bless their heart. So we hear words that give grace to those that hear. Then thir verse 31, put away bitterness, wrath, anger, slander, and malice. Oh, there's the work, right? Wow, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can encounter that person and say something wonderful. Then maybe say nothing at all. Get toxic out of your life. But when we receive the meal, we are understanding that I can't do this on my own, God. So have someone encounter them that can speak love and truth, because maybe it's not me. Verse 32, be kind to one another. Say it, ready? And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. When I was little, I got told this all the time, stop being so tenderhearted. Stop it. Stop being tenderhearted. I wish I had this little pithy scripture in my pocket. As I would have said, really? I think it's in the Bible. We all know this. I used to have this greet me and when I came into my office, when I came at home and in my car. It goes like this, saying I'm sorry equals forgiveness. Changing behavior equals trust. You say it again, saying, I'm sorry, we are people who can or should be able to at least give it a little try, and I encourage you, if you need to, do this today, to not only say, I'm sorry, but receive someone's, I'm sorry. But we who have said, I am sorry, changing our behavior will put trust into the person that we so long to, to have a renewed relationship with. This is hard work, and this is why we need Jesus, for the work that seems sometimes impossible. 2,000 years plus, a work in progress in and for humanity. That's what we've been called to, to do today in our scriptures. And you get to take your bulletin home. If you want to put that little passage with you this week, right where you need to see it time and time again, I invite you to do so. This isn't just about being a nice person. This isn't about just putting your angry self person aside. This is about being an authentic person. We use that language, be authentic, be real, be who you are. But some of us who can be in a curmudgeon sometimes, man, love me in those moments. Gently guide me out of them. Know that sometimes I'm doing the best I got. How about you? 
Because I think if I could remind myself, get back to the scriptures, get back to where I've been called, it's about being a loved child of God who follows the teaching of God. That's what the scripture said today. Ready? Being a loved child of God means what? Who follows the teachings of God. We are then called to be loved first by our Creator, forever by our Savior, called to love one another through the Spirit. What do you need to hear or speak? What do you need to receive in someone right now? Texting is powerful. What you text, what you omit, that's at your hand. What you read, what you scroll through, who you talk to, what letters you write or don't write. Who needs to hear from you today? Our scriptures called us right here, right now, to encourage one another to be the full self of who they are to look at one another when we need to be the one encouraged. This passage written 2,000 years ago, selected for this day out of a thing called lectionary, it was planned that you would hear this passage this day. What inspired you? Where did you get your marching orders? And how will you be different outside those doors? For you gathered here today at the font and tasted the meal. How is life fresh and new? Let's pray. God of all creation, we give you thanks. Indeed, you are our God and we are your people. We give you thanks that you dwell with us. May we hear these songs that will be sung today, hear the fullness of the words. Lord, speak to us. Thanks for loving us first, loving us always encouraging and inspiring us to love one another. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I invite you to remain seated as we have our hymn of the day.
We join together in confessing our faith in this great God who does love us using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. We pray for the Church of Christ in all its many forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, all communities of faith, exploring new models of ministry for the sake of the gospel, and certainly for those congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the health and well-being of, of God's beautiful creation, but we certainly pray for those affected by many storms and by drought and by wildfires. Help us to truly care for this magnificent creation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are called to positions of authority in our legal system, for judges, lawyers, police, all who work to ensure that justice may prevail. Pray for corrections officers and prison chaplains that they may deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who cry out to you in their troubles, for all who are sick, especially Bill, Mary Lou, Judy, Elizabeth, Steve, Kristen, Bob, Kate, Alexis, Nancy, John, and all those we name in our hearts before you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this congregation gathered around your table, grateful for the promise of love and, and forgiveness that we receive. May we leave this meal with a desire to share this love and forgiveness to all we meet in this coming week. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all those who have been raised to eternal life. May all those who mourn loss of loved ones know the great promises you bring of your love for now and for all eternity. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these in all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May you share that peace with one another as you want a wave or a bump, fist bump or however you may desire to do that. Please stand as you are able as we join together in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, 
you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to God. Thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together in praying that prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed Lord be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done. done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and if you have those packets of the wafer and juice, or using those at home, certainly know that Christ is present as you receive that. Otherwise, you are invited to come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ. Teach us, Lord, that we may teach the precious truths which you impart, and wing our words that they may reach the hidden depths of many a heart.
Please stand as you are able to receive God's blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen and preserve you unto life eternal. May you, as Paul writes, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you in this meal. May you go in God's peace, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will have our closing song, and after that, we will go straight to fellowship. Please stay, go outside. Yeah, the clouds are coming, they're here, but it's still a time to um, spend some time outside if you can, um, and just enjoy one another. Let's go ahead and sing Build Your Kingdom Here. Christ. All right, we'll see you all next week. Whew. Be here for Pastor Tim's and Lisa's welcome celebration. Enjoy the week. Uh,